G'day friends, it's Andrew here from Nature's Image Photography and in this video I'm going to do something quite different. I'm going to be looking at the, uh, the Nissi V7 range of filters. That's the polarizer and the neutral density and the graduated neutral density filters. The good people at Pixel One in Australia have been kind enough to send me a demo kit and I've just recently come back from uh, some travelling uh, where I've done a lot of landscape photography and had a chance to try this filter system out. Uh, so in this video I'm going to show you how I set the filters up on my camera uh, and show you some of the results uh, from my trip across to Nullarbor, hopefully some other shots as well by the time I finish making this video. Uh, now if you're interested in the Nissi filters and you learn something from this video, you can always uh, thank me with a coffee uh, and I'll put a link in the information below. Uh, and of course uh, if you're new to my channel, uh, I'll always invite people to subscribe uh, so you can see more from my world of photography. Uh, but for now, let's get on with a look at the Nissi V7 filter system. Before we get started, there is a bit of backstory to this. I haven't used square filters for quite a few years, and for good reason. Back in 2018, I took a set of ND and graduated ND filters from a reputable brand on a tour in Tasmania. Now, obviously, I was inexperienced with that type of photography, and perhaps my choice of subject wasn't great. But what I ended up with was some truly horrible colours that were so bad, it was hard to get them right in Photoshop. And the contrast was so muddy, well, let's just say I wasn't exactly inspired to keep going with the concept. So now, five years later, Pixel One offered me this opportunity to try out their V7 range of Nissi filters, just as I was about to leave on a couple of landscape photography tours. This was the perfect opportunity to put that old experience behind me and try again. And I'm glad I did because I'm really impressed with the results. So let's start with a look at how you set up the system, and it really is a fully integrated system on your camera. Then I'll take a closer look at what I think is a truly excellent circular polarizer and show you some of my photos taken using the Nissi V7 filters. Setup wants to be done in a fairly specific order and the first step is to add a step ring uh, to, uh, to put everything in place. Nissi supplied me with a bunch of different um, step rings as, as part of the kit. Uh, I've only used one so far because I've only used this on the same lens. Uh, I'm using the Leica Panasonic 12 to 60 millimeter uh, and that means it's got a 62 millimeter thread so I'm using the 62 mil step up ring uh, to screw on the front here and it's a fairly simple thing like anything else just screw it into place you do want to make sure you screw it on fairly tightly because this is the thing that holds uh, the entire uh, kit together so uh, step one step up ring that's done the next step is to add your Nissi uh, polarizing filter which is currently uh, safety protected under its uh, branded uh, cover here uh, and like before it's a uh, just a filter thread you just got to get it into the right position and screw it into place now this one you don't want to screw on too tightly um, simply because uh, well if you're like me and if you've ever uh, put two, two filters together too tightly you, you know how hard it can be to separate them so if you put this on too tightly you might find that when you unscrew it you'll take the um, step ring with it and it can be quite hard to get them apart but once you've now got that in place um, attached firmly enough that uh, it's not going to come off obviously uh, but not so tightly that you fuse it together with your step ring uh, you've now got your polarizing filter ready to go so if you've used polarizing filters before you'd be familiar with uh, the notion that the front element will continue to rotate so that you can increase the level of polarization increase and decrease it as you turn uh, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, now you really don't want to do what I'm doing here which is to um, uh, reach forward with your fingers because you could end up touching the glass by accident and putting marks and scratches and fingerprints on there. You don't need to because Nissi have uh, put these little turning wheels into the filter holder itself uh, and as you turn these wheels you can see the, um, the polarizers turning there. It gives you very very fine control uh, and quite cleverly they've given you two wheels. Uh, there's this one at the top and there's this one at the bottom here. Uh, now I found when I'm shooting uh, with the camera positioned the way it is now in landscape orientation, it's easier for my fingers to find the top one. But when I turn the camera sideways and I shoot a, a vertical format, um, then I find it much easier for my fingers to find the bottom one. So I think it's a really good idea that they've given us a couple of these uh, turning rings and uh, they give you very, very fine control. So you can increase and decrease your level of polarization without ever having to reach forward and touch the, um, the front element. Now, 
if you're a landscape photographer, you might find that quite often uh, the, only polar the only filter you'll use in a day would be the polarizer. You might not, never be looking at using the ND and the graduated ND filters. Uh, but if you do, um, I'll show you how we attach those next. When you're ready to attach your ND and graduated ND filters, that's where this piece comes in. This is the holder that holds your square filters in place. And this is where you begin to see just how cleverly designed this system really is, uh, because it's very easy to attach uh, with one simple move. Now, it all comes down to this clever little uh, locking pin here, which you can see if I pull that up, uh, and then let it go, it just springs back into place. Uh, now making this fit is simply a matter of putting this in position, pulling the pin up, letting the pin go, and now your holder is firmly attached. Firmly, but in such a way that it can still rotate. Uh, and that's very handy because when you're using your square filters, or particularly the, the graduated neutral density filters, you don't necessarily always want to have your uh, filter coming in from the top. Now, when I was on the Nullarbor doing some uh, sunset photographs, I had the sun way down on the horizon uh, to the right-hand side of the picture and some foreground objects on the left. And I didn't necessarily want my uh, just the top half of the picture dark. I wanted to, to darken down the right-hand side of the photograph because that's where the, uh, the sun was. So by attaching the filter and then being able to rotate it to any angle you like, when you're using a graduated, graduated neutral density filter, you can have it coming in from any angle you like. Uh, and that's a, a very handy system. The more you use uh, graduated ND filters, the more you'll discover just how useful that is. Of course, if you're like me, you might only very occasionally use uh, your square filters, but I use a polarizer um, a lot when I'm doing landscape photography. And uh, once you take that away, uh, put all that uh, back in its case, uh, you can just leave the polarizer on all day. Uh, remember, the polarizer comes with this very secure um, lens cap of its own. Uh, so if you can make space in your camera bag for that uh, wider cap, uh, you could uh, be just leave that on the, your camera for the entire day and you could very happily uh, set yourself up for an entire day of landscape photography. So that's the setup. Now let's take a look at everything I took with me on my two landscape tours. As you can see, there's a fair bit here, but there are plenty of options in terms of what you might like to purchase for yourself. You can just buy the holder kit with the CPL filter, or you can choose from starter, advanced or professional kits, which include more or less of what you see here, depending on which kit you buy. And of course, you can buy new filters to add to your kit as time goes by. Now I want to talk about that circular polarizing filter, which I have to say is the best CPL filter I've ever used. If you've used a polarizer before, you'll know that most of them will cut your light down by two stops or so. Well, this one cuts the light just a little, but not nearly so much. And yet when you turn it 90 degrees, it still has a great polarizing effect. And while the images it produced were dynamic, the colors I got from it were very natural with little or no color change from shots taken without the filter. Added to that was the great ease of use. I took to those little turning dials with ease and I found the fine control they gave me made this filter a genuine pleasure to use. Now to the neutral density filters, and after my bad experience in Tasmania all those years ago, the first thing I wanted to see was the effect they had on colour. This was my first test, and this one is just a comparison shot using only the polarizer. Now here's the shot where I added the 10 stop filter. I've done a tiny bit of editing from the raw files to try and match the brightness, but I haven't adjusted colours or white balance. As you can see, there's a very slight colour shift, but it's so slight it really took very little adjustment to produce a final edit I would have been happy with, if only it was a more interesting photo. So with that first experiment out of the way, I went in search of some better photo opportunities. Unfortunately, we'd picked a very windy week for our journey across the Nullarbor, and due to weight restrictions, I was carrying only a very light travel tripod. That's not a great combination for shooting super slow shutter speeds, and I often struggled to get sharp photos. But when the elements worked in my favour, I managed to get some really great results. And I have to say that Nessie have 100% renewed my faith in neutral density filters. Now soon after the Nullarbor trip, I was off again to the South Island of New Zealand, this time with a new full-frame Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II added to my camera bag. 
These were landscapes of a very different kind, but once again that great circular polarizer came into its own. More importantly, I had some great opportunities to work with one of the graduated neutral density filters. Several times, and I'm going to show you just a couple, I was faced with situations where getting a decent exposure on the main subject resulted in overexposed washed out skies. That's exactly what you see here with this unedited RAW file. Now another shot with the medium GND filter added to tone down the sky, and you can see how effective it is without being obvious or spoiling the overall tone of the image. Now there's no prize for guessing which one I picked out when I got home, and I decided to give this one the full treatment in Adobe Camera Raw to see what was made possible thanks to a great camera and the Nissi graduated filter. And here's my second example, where a combination of glare, distance, salt mist and uneven exposure combined to take all the definition out of the background and sky. The graduated filter came to the rescue again, giving me a much better raw original that really required very little editing to produce a much more satisfying landscape image. Okay, I guess that about wraps up my impressions of the Nissi V7 filter system. I have to thank Pixel 1 for this opportunity, you really have restored my faith in square filter systems and shown me just how good a circular polarizer can be. For people who worry that square filters are a bit fiddly to use, well let's face it, they are a bit more involved than a simple round screw in filter. But I have to say this system is so well integrated I really can't see how they could have designed a better user friendly experience for the photographer. If you've had your eye on the Nissi V7 filters as a means to enhancing your landscape photography, I'm happy to recommend these filters to anyone watching. So that's it from me. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe before you go. I haven't been very active on YouTube lately, but there's a few big things coming up on my photography horizon, so stay tuned. For now, I'm Andrew Goodall. This is Nature's Image Photography. Thanks for watching.